Okay, let's talk about the MEGA Paraprofessional Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are studying to become a paraprofessional in the state of Missouri. And of course, you have to take this certification exam or assessment and pass it in order to become a paraprofessional. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at a practice problem, math practice problem that you should be able to handle uh, pretty well if you expect to ace this paraprofessional assessment. Okay, so we're going to get into that in a second, but first let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last several years I've constructed many online uh, math courses to actually include an MEGA paraprofessional math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to this course in the description of this uh, video if that's something uh, you want to check out. Uh, of course, you want to have a uh, organized way to be studying for math because there is quite a bit of math on this paraprofessional assessment. So just because you're not going to be a full you know, certified teacher doesn't mean that you're not going to have to know a decent amount of math. And I would classify the math that you're going to need to know on uh, the MEGA paraprofessional assessment to be like high school level math, okay? Uh, algebra, geometry, and of course, a lot of your uh, elementary math concepts as well, fractions, decimals, uh, place value, etc. So it's something, you know, you definitely want to, you know, uh, study thoroughly for in order to, you know, make sure you uh, do well on this assessment. Okay, so let's get into this math practice problem. So let's see what's going on here. All right, so I have some numbers, okay? And this is a number line, okay? Oftentimes in math, we refer to this as a real number line. So here is zero, and then we plot numbers on this number line. So what I'd like you to do, okay, we have these numbers, okay? We have one half, positive one half. We have negative pi. So hopefully that rings a bell with uh, with you if you remember what that is. If not, of course, I'm going to go over the solution to this. I have negative 1, I have uh, 3 halves, and then I have uh, 0.1, okay? So what I'd like you to do is to plot these values on this number line. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of get a piece of paper, sketch this out, and plot these respective values on this number line uh, from least to highest, okay? So just basically put these guys in their correct order on this number line, okay? So, uh, by the way, don't use a calculator, all right? Uh, you know, that's not the <laughs> point here. Point here is to see what you know in this moment in time. Okay, so let's get into this. All right, so here we have zero, okay? This is our number line. And we need to understand that numbers going in this direction are increasing and numbers going in this direction are decreasing all right so let's just get some basic numbers down here so let's say this would be one okay positive one this would be positive two this would be positive three this would be positive four so numbers going this way are increasing and if we go forever and ever and ever eventually we'll get to this place called positive infinity so nothing you don't you don't have to worry about this too much because we'll never get there but it, we are going to uh, go increasingly infinitely large in this direction all right how about this direction okay well numbers get smaller right so are there values less than zero yes there are okay so we'll start with negative one negative two all right negative three, et cetera. So now this, this part right here of the number line, this is where people get confused when we study this concept of what we call real numbers, all right? So real numbers and positive and negative numbers. I mean, it can be a little confusing at first. So here I'm saying, wow, I have a number that's less than zero? Mm, yes, you do, right? So let me ask you, okay, what would you rather have in your bank account? Would you rather have zero dollars or would you rather have negative $10, okay? So what does this mean to you? Well, this means $10 of debt. You have no money, but you also owe $10, right? So would you rather have this situation or would you just rather have like no dollars, right? No money at all, okay? Well, of course, we would just rather be broke, if you will, no money, uh, and yes, I'll skip on the debt. I'd rather not have the debt I'll just have 
zero money, okay, and I'll be happy. So this is larger, okay, greater than negative ten dollars. All right. So yes, uh, these concepts of negative numbers have real life meaning. That's why we call these guys real numbers. Okay. So, but it can be confusing when you're first learning this stuff. But the main thing here, at least with the respect to this problem, is to make sure we know how to uh, place values on the number line. Okay, so let's just kind of start. Um, we'll start with this one here. We'll go from left to right. Uh, positive one half. So that's a positive one half. So where is that going to be located? Okay, so one half is between zero and one. So it would be like right about here. That would be our positive one half. And that was pretty easy. Okay. All right. So what about this guy? We have negative pi. So what is pi? Hopefully, and if you're uh, not familiar with this concept, uh, you know, uh, hopefully you were familiar with it, but pi is a number, very, very important number in mathematics. It's approximately equal to the decimal 3.14, okay? And I say approximately because this number goes on infinitely. That's a whole nother discussion, but basically... This little crazy symbol here, this pi uh, uh, um, variable, okay, uh, or symbol, okay, represents this whole number, okay, 3.14. And what, you know, what's the importance of it? Well, it just, this is a hugely important uh, number in mathematics, okay, and we do a lot when we're dealing with circles and circle proms, then, you know, we get into pi. So, Again, I don't want to digress, but just know that this number, this value, is approximately 3.14. Okay, so if I'm talking about negative pi, well, what value is that? Well, that's going to be approximately negative 3.14. And I'm using the word approximately because this decimal continues on and on and on and on and on and on and on. So we're just going to kind of round it off and use 3.14. So when I do that, we're talking about an estimation. So I'm using that word approximately very specifically here. All right. So if I want to plot negative pi, okay, what I'm looking to do is to plot the point or plot the value negative uh, 3.14 on my number line. So here I have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So like right here would be maybe negative 3.14. So we'll plot a negative pi there. Okay. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. These are just estimations. You know, uh, you know, you don't want to be, um, you know, you want to be as accurate as possible. But don't worry about it. These are just, you know, again, you're just kind of modeling the best you can on your number line. All right. So let's move on. And we have negative one. That's an easy one. Here's negative one. It's located right here. Pretty simple. Now. These values right here, just as a little side thing, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These numbers refer to, uh, we refer to as whole numbers, okay? And then we have all these, these negative versions of these positive whole numbers, and including 0, we uh, called all these type of values in mathematics integers, okay? Integers. So... If you didn't know that, now you know it now, okay? So a lot, you know, we're talking about numbers, number lines. There's a lot of different types of numbers, classification numbers. But this particular problem, again, is just focusing on your understanding of where these particular values go. All right, so let's talk about three halves, all right? Where is three halves on this number line? Well, so three halves as a fraction... You'd have to say to yourself, hmm, okay, what is that number? Well, a good way to do that is just to take uh, 3 divided by 2. So 2 goes into 3, 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. So we're talking about the number 1 and uh, 1 half, okay? So where is 1 and 1 half? Well, here's 1, there's 2. So this would be 1 and, and uh, 1 and 1 half. Of course, you can think of that as 1.5. Or, uh, of course, three halves. So that's where three halves would be on this number line. All right, so now leaves us to our last uh, value here, and that is 0.1. Okay, 0.1. All right, so 0.1, you know, it's not so obvious where that's going to be on the number line, right? But what we can do 
is think of 0.1 as what? We want to think of it as a fraction. So 0.1 is equal to the fraction. How, how do I say this? Okay. Well, I would say this as a one tenth. Okay. That's one tenth. So 0.1 is equivalent to one tenth. All right. So where's one tenth on the number line? Well, let's just take a look at uh, numbers. Okay. So here we have zero and let's say this is a fraction 10 over 10, right? So this would be five over 10. These are tenths, right? So right here would be one tenth. So right over here, right there, kind of close, would be our one tenth. Okay. All right. So again, we can go into all kinds of different, uh, you know, additional, you know, comparisons, you know, what's greater, one tenth, three halves, uh, negative numbers, positive numbers, everything else. This is really important stuff. Okay. Because what we're uh, really focusing in uh, again here is the concept of real numbers, real numbers, right? What they are, where they're located, and then more importantly, uh, the rules and how to deal with positive and negative numbers. How do we add them? How do we sub uh, subtract them, multiply, divide, etc.? This is definitely stuff that you need to know for the MEGA paraprofessional assessment, okay? All right, so hopefully you uh, you know uh, were able to do this uh, problem uh, correctly. If you weren't, no big deal. Use it as feedback. But again, uh, you don't want to go in and take uh, this assessment and then you know not get the score that you want. Just so you know, even teachers, many many teachers, uh, do not pass their certification exams. Some teachers have to take a particular certification exams multiple times before they pass. So do not underestimate uh, this assessment, okay? Um, and by the way, too, uh, in terms of being a para, uh, paraprofessional, it's a critically important function in schools, okay? I have the highest respect for paraprofessionals and you do a lot. So it is a, um, you know, a definitely a very respectable uh, career. So definitely wish you all the best. And let's go ahead and finish this up. Again, uh, I'm gonna leave a link to my uh, paraprofessional math test prep course in the description of this video. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and like the video again, and leave us some feedback. What's your situation? Um, <clears throat> you know, what's drawn you to uh, become a paraprofessional? Do you have any interest in maybe one day becoming a teacher? Okay, who knows, right? This could be a start to a bigger career path for you. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching uh, career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.